Hello there, friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I am Bishop A. Reginald Littman, your host and the senior pastor of the New Mountaintop Church here in West Georgia, specifically 7822 Connors Road, Winston, Georgia, and that's 30187. We're 30 minutes west of downtown Atlanta, and I'm so excited to share this series of teachings with you. We're in part nine of our series on lessons from the 12 disciples. And in this week's session, we're talking about stepping into faith, James, the son of Alphaeus. So welcome again, friends, to our inspiring Bible study on James, the son of Alphaeus. Now, before we begin, don't forget that right down below in the description box is a free PDF handout that goes along with this teaching. It has discovery questions, and it's a PDF document that you can download for free 99. Share it with a friend. And also, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified every time new content is loaded. So this week, we're talking in our Bible study about James, the son of Alphaeus, and how he stepped into faith. Now, often he is referred to as James the Less or James the Lesser. And this is a lesser known disciple of Jesus Christ. Yet he has a remarkable story that offers valuable lessons and insight for our faith journey. So, let's delve into the life of James and uncover treasures of wisdom that are hidden within his journey of discipleship. So, I'm going to share with you Matthew chapter 10, verse 2, 3, and 4. And it reads like this. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother, Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. That is referring to Jesus. So, as we think on the background and profession of James, the son of Alphaeus, he was among the 12 disciples that were chosen by Jesus to accompany him in his earthly ministry. And what a joy and privilege and honor that was for James the Less to have been chosen by Jesus to walk with him during his earthly ministry. You know, the profession of James is really limited in the scriptures. It has actually believed that James, like many of his fellow disciples, may have been a common laborer or possibly a fisherman before answering the call of Jesus. And of course, we know that Jesus called numerous fishermen because he had a thing about finding a person who was actively engaged and then calling them into a higher, more special calling. I believe that the Lord does keep an eye on what we're doing where we are before he promotes us into where we can be, which is a reminder that we must be faithful in what we're doing and where we're serving before we should anticipate the Lord really taking us to another place. So when it comes to the calling and the family of James, it's interesting because James's life changed forever when Jesus extended the invitation to him. And he said to him, as he had said to others, follow me. And just like his fellow disciples, James left behind his old life to follow the Messiah. And while not much is really known about James's family, I think we can definitely surmise and imagine the support and the encouragement that they could have possibly provided as James embarked on this journey of transformation of faith. Then again, we don't really know because there's no evidence of it. 
So James could have also easily been faced with much disregard and disdain for his decision to walk away from what he had known all of his life and to follow this man from Galilee named Jesus. And isn't it interesting that when we decide to follow Jesus, we often find ourselves met with much discontent from family members and friends who know us well, who would assume that we're making a mistake in following Jesus. But that's what makes following Jesus a measure of faith. And when we look at the life of James the Lesser, we see that he stepped into his faith. So let's talk about some of the key moments in the ministry with Christ. So even though James may be considered as the less prominent in the gospel narratives compared to the other disciples, his presence in the inner circle of Jesus was significant. Some key moments in his ministry with Christ included witnessing Jesus's miracles, such as the healing of the sick, the feeding of the multitude. He was there and being present even at the transfiguration and participating in the Last Supper. These are hugely significant moments that were transformative in the life of James the Less, along with the other of the disciples. And so there are some very key lessons that I want to leave with you from the life of James the Less this week. So as we look at the life of James, son of Alphaeus, one lesson we see is that we must step out in faith. Just as James responded to Jesus's call without hesitation, you and I are called to step out in faith and follow Christ with our whole heart, trusting in his guidance and in his provision. To have left his family, his profession, all that he had known, literally meant that he was leaving his provisions behind, or at least his way of providing for himself. And to step out in faith and follow Jesus with all of the uncertainty of where this journey would lead was indeed a life lesson that you and I can apply to our own walk of faith. So we have to trust in God's guidance as well as God's provision. So let me give you an action step relevant to this life lesson from James, son of Alphaeus, also known as James the Lesser. And the action step is this. Take a step of faith in an area where you've been hesitant. Now, I want you to drop in the comments below. What is an area that you have been hesitant with stepping out in faith? What is it? What is it that you feel like God has called you to do, maybe assigned you to do, but because of fear of failure or fear of others' comments or just fear of fear (laughs) that you have allowed it to hold you back from stepping out in faith? I want you to drop in the comments below. And what I want to do for you this week is I want to pray for you for courage in that area that God will give you what you need to follow in James' footsteps and take the action step to step out in faith in the area where you have been hesitant. So make sure you drop it in the comments so I can pray for you and with you this week on that. Here's number two. We have to embrace humility. Embrace humility. Now, this is another life lesson from James the Less. James served faithfully alongside Jesus and his fellow disciples, but he did it with humility. Friends, you and I too are called to embrace humility in our service to God as well as our service to other people. And it causes us to recognize that truth, that the greatness that we pursue actually lies in humility. So many people are seeking to be great and grand and their name to be called and their names to be in light. But the truth is 
Greatness lies in humility. Now, here's an action step to help you to develop humility. Seek opportunities to serve others humbly without seeking recognition. Let me say that one again for you. Seek opportunities to serve others humbly without seeking recognition. Now, that's easier said than done, isn't it? But when we understand that God wants us to be humble, then we need to be looking for opportunities to practice the scripture and put what God's will for our lives is into practice. All right, here's another important life lesson from the life of James the Less. We need to foster unity, foster unity. James played a role in fostering unity amongst the disciples. Despite their diverse backgrounds, you know, you had Matthew, who was a well-trained civil person who had a government job and lots of money. And then you had fishermen and those who were blue-collar workers of their day. Yet, despite all of their backgrounds and personalities, we're called to pursue unity in the body of Christ. You see, there should be no big me, little you when it comes to the body of Christ or to the church. We are called to pursue unity in the body of Christ, embracing our differences and working together for common purpose of advancing God's kingdom. You see, your outside exposure and your Uh, exposure to corporate America or your exposure to money does not make you any better than any other believer in the body of Christ. We have to understand that everybody in the body matters. And as I share it with our congregation on Sunday, as the scripture teaches us, the eye can't tell the hand that you're not essential. Both are necessary. The foot can't tell the ear that you're not valuable, without the ear or without the foot, we would not function as we were designed to do. And therefore, everybody in the body of Christ matters. And so we have to foster humility amongst each other and amongst ourselves, and it starts with us. Well, here's an action step to help you to foster humility. And if you just tuned in, I want to remind you that there's a free handout that you can find in the description box below. I want you to make sure you get it because it will take you a little bit further. It's the full notes of this teaching, along with personal discovery questions that you can share with your friends and relatives around the country and create your own Bible study. Have a discussion about the questions. So here's an action step that you will find on this week's handout. And that is this, reach out to someone with whom you may have differences and seek reconciliation. Reach out to someone. You know, we probably all have in the past or maybe even currently or maybe futuristically had a person that we were having a squabble with or not quite gelling with, not quite getting along with. One of the best ways to foster humility as a believer and a disciple Pulling this lesson from James's life is to reach out to someone with whom you may have a difference and seek reconciliation. What does that look like? Well, it might be a phone call. It might be a letter that you write where you say, hey, I know we've had some differences over the years. And for whatever role I've played in it, I want to apologize and make amends with you. I want to reconcile. I want us to be good because we're brothers and sisters in Christ. It's that simple. And you don't have to go through a lot of details and those types of things. So here's another great life lesson that we learned from the life of James. And that is that we must endure trials, endure trials. Now, like all disciples, James faced challenges and trials in his journey with Christ. And you and I will as well. We all will have triumphs and trials. (laughs) We'll all have some good days and some bad days. It's all a part of the journey. And just like all of us, James faced challenges as well. But his example encourages us 
to endure trials and to do it with steadfast faith, knowing that God is with us in every circumstance. There will never be a circumstance that you will face where God is not with you. And I love Psalm 46 verse 1 that says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. And when you look at that verse, you'll discover it's got 12 words, maybe one for each of the 12 disciples. God is the first word. Trouble is the 12th word, but strength is the sixth word, which means if you start out with God, even though you're going to face some trouble, he'll give you strength on the way to your trouble. So here's an action step for you for this particular point, and that is to pray for strength and perseverance in the midst of trials that you may be facing. So pray for strength. And I want you to drop a comment in the comment section and list an area that you need strength, an area that you need to persevere. I want to pray for you this week and touch and agree with you concerning that area. So make sure you leave a comment there. And here's another very important life lesson from the life of James, and that is that we must lead with love. Lead with love. James's life really indeed, it reflects a life of leadership that is categorized and characterized by love and compassion. As followers of Christ, you and I are called to lead with love in our relationships, in our workplaces, and in our communities. Our job is literally to reflect the love of Christ to those around us. So here's an action step for you to practice this week. And again, make sure you grab that free PDF handout so you can take a deeper dive into this teaching. But here it is. Look for opportunities to demonstrate love and kindness to other people today. Again, look for opportunities to demonstrate love and kindness to others today. Well, listen, there's so much that we can glean from the life of the 12 disciples, and I hope, trust, and pray that you're being blessed by these teachings. Let me know that by liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. And don't forget to grab the free PDF handout below because it'll help you as you grow in your faith. Well, until next time, this has been part nine of our series on life lessons from the 12 disciples. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, and until next time, you go with God. Mm